بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد السلام uh, عليكم brothers and sisters my name is Abdul Wahab Falk I'm from North Carolina I just graduated from University of Medina from the College of Sharia I was born in Brooklyn, New York and basically around the age of let's say about seven or so I moved to North Carolina I was in Charlotte, North Carolina with my mom uh, we did a lot of moving around within Charlotte, North Carolina, so I'm more comfortable saying that I'm a native of North Carolina because I know more about North Carolina than, than New York or any other state for that matter. I come from a very strong Christian family. My mother is a minister. My grandmother is a minister. Uh, my grandparents are ministers. I accepted Islam at the age of 13. What led me to accept Islam was I have a Muslim aunt. I have one Muslim aunt. And alhamdulillah, her main goal at the time was to tell the family about Islam. And alhamdulillah, I, I chose to listen to what my aunt had to say. And it wasn't really the miracles of Islam or the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's just basically more of her actions that led me to Islam. The way she wore hijab, the way that she prayed, everything just made sense by her actions. So that led me to accepting Islam. However, right before that, there's a short story that actually confirmed that Islam was the truth for me per personally. After my aunt told me about Islam, I remember one night I went home and I got on my hands and my knees and I prayed. The only way I knew how to pray was to pray as a Christian at the time. So I got on my hands and my knees and I remember saying that, Oh Allah, or Jesus, Buddha, whoever is the true creator at the time just guide me to what is right and show me what will happen to me if I reject Islam. And like I said, I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for me. But when I went to bed that night, I immediately fell asleep and I had a dream that was so scary that at that point for me, it confirmed that Islam is the truth. The dream that I had at the time, basically when I went to sleep, I was in a room and I was surrounded by fire. And I was burning. So I don't know if like, anybody else, however, but sometimes you have a dream where if you actually touch something, you can feel it. Now, when I was in this dream, I actually felt uncomfortable. I felt afraid. I saw things that, you know, it was very, very disturbing. So when I woke up, it confirmed for me at that time. I said, this is, Islam is the truth. Islam is the truth. So I put that with uh, the fact, you know, that my, my aunt, she wore hijab. When you go to the Christian church, especially in America, a lot of times they have pictures of Maryam alayhi salam hanging on the walls. You have pictures of Isa alayhi salam hanging on the walls, or it's uh, uh, depicted to be Isa, or it's depicted to be Maryam alayhi salam on the walls. So therefore, I saw her in hijab. I saw Isa that he had a beard, or he had a thobe, and so on and so forth. So everything kind of made sense. And then after that, it just led to me wanting to study about Islam. So when my aunt, she, you know, she told me about Islam and I finally took my Shahada at 13 years old. I'll never forget it. It was May 1st, 2004. May 1st, 2004. I accepted Islam in her living room. At the time, I had a funny understanding about Islam, which was basically, she told me, whatever sins that you commit, commit is gone in the past once you accept your Shahada. And I remember at the time when I was 13 years old, I always wanted to get my ears pierced. So, and the next following week, um, <laughs> I went to go get my ears pierced. A nice diamond earring, actually. And <laughs> when I got, then she explained to me, you know, you men are not supposed to get their ears pierced, and that's haram, and so on and so forth. So I took my shahada again. Because I had the understanding that once you take your shahada, then it wipes away all your sins before. So any mistake that I ever made at the time, because I was 13 years old, <laughs> and any mistake that I made at the time, I always take my shahada over and over and over again until someone at the time I had a friend, his name is Sharif. And he took me to the side and he said, Akhi, what are you doing? He explained to me, no, that's not how it works. There's something in Islam called, you know, Toba, which is to make repentance and so on and so forth. And you only take a shahada one time. So <laughs> at that time, it really solidified for me that, you know what, I really, really need to learn my religion. I really, really need to learn my religion. And my aunt, and she explained to me that there's a university overseas in Saudi Arabia. So what we did at the time was she got on the internet. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Google back then. I'm kind of old now. I think it was like AOL or something like that. So wherever it was, we got on the internet and we were searching you know, about the university. 
So I tried to want, I wanted to get inside the university here. So I sent them a message, and they respond that we don't we don't accept children of this age and so on and so forth. But basically, when I found out from the university that I was uh, too young to actually come, which makes sense. Um, to be totally honest, I kind of backtracked, kind of fell off because. Uh, at that time, I was living in North Carolina from 13, then I went to go live with my father in New York around the age 14 all the way until I was about 17 years old. Now, generally speaking, I mean, outside of religion, when a teenager is around 13, 14, 17, 18, those are very crucial years in their life. And usually the decisions that you make at that time will depict what happens, you know, when you're around 20 and so on and so forth, believe it or not. So when I went to New York, um, I was basically exposed to <laughs> the Big Apple, if you will, and everything that comes with that. So I kind of fell off because at the time I was a new Muslim. I didn't understand anything about Islam, but the most friends, the Muslim friends that I had in high school, the understanding that they had about Islam was a little bit different than I had. And what I mean by that is that usually sometimes what happens when you grow up Muslim, not in every case, but in some cases, sometimes the children don't take the religion that seriously. So I felt at the time, well, if they were born Muslim and they're not, you know, taking the religion that seriously and I accepted Islam, then I could do the same thing they're doing because they know more about Islam than me. So that led to a certain part of my life where I stopped praying, um, stopped going to the masjid. And I just, how many lives I still consider myself to be Muslim, but I really wasn't involved in Islamic studies. It was just being a regular teenager, whenever, whatever comes with that. It was shortly after that, when I was about 16 or 17 years old, I started to see young brothers coming from overseas, from different countries, whether they were coming from Egypt or they were coming from the university here. And I was just so amazed that they were able to speak Arabic, um, who were non arabs either they were white or they were black or Spanish. They come from different countries. And I was just so amazed that they spoke Arabic. Like, wow, that has to be that has to be real cool. Because one of the things that my parents always had against me at the time um, was that, well, how do you know that the Quran that you read here in America is the same Quran that they read in Saudi Arabia? It's the same Quran that they read in Kuwait. It's the same Quran that they read in Egypt and so on and so forth. How can you say that your religion is the truth if you don't know the actual language that it was you know that your book was sitting down in now at the time i could easily flip that around because they don't speak the language that the bible was sitting down in but however they had a point so at the time i said you know what i really i really really need to study islam i really really need to study islam so alhamdulillah at the time at that point i decided to move to kuwait Around the age of, I believe it was about 18 years old, I went to Kuwait because at the time I had a friend who, he used to be uh, a rapper, his name is Loon, and he accepted Islam. So when he accepted Islam, we became very, very close friends, and that led to me actually going to Kuwait to visit. I went to Kuwait twice. While I was there, alhamdulillah, I met some good people that allowed me to come back the second time, and the second time I went back to Kuwait is actually for a job. Now, when I was working there, alhamdulillah, I was able to, you know, put myself inside of an Arabic program, and I studied Arabic for a little bit. And while I was there, I also sent my papers to the University of Medina. When the list came out, and I found out that I was finally accepted, it was like the best thing that has ever happened to me after accepting Islam. Because at this point, it allowed me to actually study the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I always wanted to know my religion. I wanted to be able to defend my religion. I wanted to be able to, you know, practice. As we all know, there's five pillars in Islam. So I said, if I go to the University of Medina, I'll be able to complete some of those pillars. Hajj, I can learn about zakat. You know, I already took the shahada several times. <laughs> and I'll be able to fill all these, you know, the five pillars of Islam. I'm a new Muslim. I'm one of the first Muslims in my family. If I learn what I need to learn now, my children won't have to struggle to learn Arabic. My grandchildren won't have to learn, uh, struggle to learn Arabic because their father went through it for them. And at the end of the day as well, it's a free education. Um, it's safe, it's a safe environment. So alhamdulillah, I felt that you know, this is one of the best places for me to actually go. Actually, my mother, she was very, very supportive. My mother and my father was very, very supportive of me coming here. So that meant a lot as well. And once I learned Arabic and once I learned, you know, the certain basics of Islam, 
at that point, I felt like, okay, now my parents can't use that excuse anymore of, well, how do you know it's the same Quran? How do you know this and how do you know that? Because now I speak the language. Alhamdulillah, it was more of a, it's just, just a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to even be here, to even be here. Alhamdulillah. One of the reasons, to be totally honest with you guys, one of the reasons why I became a student of knowledge was there's one hadith, there's one hadith that I read. I remember I read it when I was about 14 or 15 years old. And the hadith basically is, the Prophet sallallahu he said, Man salaka tariqin yal tamisu fihi ilman, sahallahu luhu bihi tariqin ala jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned, he said that whoever treads a path seeking in the knowledge, Allah will make the path of Jannah easy for him. Now, the reason why that hadith meant so much to me is because that with all the sins that I have, if I just seek knowledge, Allah will forgive me and Allah will grant me Jannah. That's an easy trade. To be totally honest with you guys, there's another side to Medina. When you come to Medina, uh, usually there's, depending on your community you came from back home, you're more so usually grouped with a certain group of brothers. Now, when I first came to university, alhamdulillah, you know, I, to put the best construction on, I believe brothers wanted good for each other. So uh, some people advise you to, you know, to not get involved with certain groups of brothers and so on and so forth. And may Allah reward everybody for their intentions. So at the time, you know, brothers advised me to stay away from certain individuals and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. Don't really want to get too much into it. So I took their advice at the time. Do I still agree with certain things that they said? No. Um, one of the things about knowledge is that as you go through your studies, you're supposed to change. Knowledge is supposed to change you. Um, there's certain things, and you know, just being a human being, you have certain things about yourself, certain characteristics, they may not necessarily change right away. Um, but knowledge is supposed to change an individual. So certain opinions that I had in the beginning, uh, I no longer have today. Now, one of the things that I would like for everyone, um, students who are still studying uh, and people back home to realize, when a student comes to the University of Medina, he usually comes around the age of about 19, 20 years old, 25 sometimes. The reason why I want to mention that is because you have to understand this person has been a particular way for 20 years of his life. So when he comes here, two years is not going to change that person automatically. Right? Some people, they come here, um, such as myself and other brothers. Other brothers have accepted Islam two years before they came here, a year before they came here. Uh, myself, I actually started practicing Islam a couple of years before I actually came here. So everyone has come with a different understanding. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone is trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think certain attitudes that brothers take, uh, we need to actually tune those attitudes and actually just realize the environment we're dealing with. What I think we should have done in the beginning, you know, brothers, we should be more supportive of each other. Um, unfortunately, some people, when they come here, they just feel that everyone should be on the same wavelength and their understanding is the only understanding and so on and so forth. Uh, in some cases, that's true. In some cases, it's not true. So unfortunately, when I came here, uh, I kind of shut a lot of people out and that was wrong for me to do so. Alhamdulillah, after a short period of time of being in the Arabic program and learning uh, Arabic, I started to get more involved in my studies and just see things for what they really were. That led to, you know, me actually now be able to talk to some of the scholars and get advice from different people and just accept things for what they really were. So Alhamdulillah, that was actually the beginning of me changing. And at the end of the day, also, I want to advise every student, even the brothers and sisters back home. When you want to quit, remember why you started. There's been plenty of times, I think every student goes through that phase where they want to just leave. You know, this, I didn't come here for this. I didn't come here for fitna. I didn't come here for nonsense. It's just too much. It's more, you know, I bit off more than I can chew. So I started thinking about my life. Why did I accept Islam? Why did I even want to come here? As I told you before, I know my sins better than anyone else. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Whoever treads a path, seeking in their knowledge, Allah make the path of Jannah easy for him. This is why I came here. This is why I wanted to be a student of knowledge. So, 
I just held on to that one hadith and that caused me to want to finish the Arabic program and to finish the University of Medina. So once again, no matter what your goals are in life as far as Islamic goals, whether you want to finish the Quran, whether you want to learn Arabic, it doesn't matter how long it takes. The point is that you're sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you try. And when you want to give up, remember why you started. That is very, very important. One of the advice that one of the scholars he gave me, he said, when you have your companions need to be of two levels. One few of your companions need to be above you in knowledge, and some of your companions need to be below you in knowledge. Now that's not to say you need to go around and start looking at your friends and well, he doesn't know anything, he knows and so on and so forth. No. But the advice, the reason why the advice is so important is because that when you're around those who know more than you, it's easy to humble yourself. And then when you're around those who don't know as much as you, it's a test for you to humble yourself. And at the time, if those who are below you in knowledge ask you, did you read Quran today, for an example, you should feel ashamed to say, I know more than this person. I didn't read Quran today. So it kind of ba it balances you out. It balances you out. So I took that advice at the time, and I thought it was very, very good advice, and I still do. Um, alhamdulillah. And I just started to just practice. Just practice my Arabic with my friends, if I made mistakes, you're going to make a lot of mistakes studying. Um, no one is free from mistakes. So alhamdulillah, I went to, after I graduated in the Arabic program, I went to the College of Sharia. One of the reasons why I wanted to go to the College of Sharia is basically, no matter what you do in life, it kind of falls into five categories. Either what you're doing is haram, or what you're doing is halal, or what you're doing is mubah, or what you're doing is makruh, and so on and so forth. And makruh meaning that it's disliked, or what you're doing is sunnah. So no matter what you do in your daily life, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, it falls within these five categories. So because of that, I felt that, well, which college will teach me in detail about these five particular things? So I decided to go to the College of Sharia. Uh, alhamdulillah, the college is four years. I was able to fly through the program by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I went through the program, alhamdulillah, and I'm one of the graduates of this year, of 2017. Throughout my course uh, of, of studies, I realized I wanted to set up a program to help new Muslims and to help people who want to study Islam, who have been Muslim for a certain period of time. So I started a program actually called um, Pendipat Academy. Now actually, the reason why I chose the name Pendipat Academy was basically because just sitting in my room just jotting down ideas, just jotting down ideas, writing on paper. And I said, well, pin the pad. <laughs> it made sense. Also, because of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he said, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. And for me, you know, I find benefits and things like that. So I said, you know what? Pin the pad academy where, you know, we make, you know, ideas become a reality. And dreams become reality and everything started with a pen so i would like to have an islamic aspect to my uh, my institute and also a secular aspect to my institute meaning that uh alhamdulillah before i came to university uh i was a mathematics major so i'm very very good in math also in the university uh, in the, the college of Shida, you study in islamic inheritance which i'm very good at as well alhamdulillah so the reason why i mention that is because Eventually, in my institute, I want to have tutoring for kids, uh, whether it's also social studies, whether it's, you know, math, and also from the dean aspect, where you have classes on Sira, classes on Arabic, classes on Fiqh, and so on and so forth. So, this is the program that I have. I actually have a website, uh, pendipadacademy.com, uh, YouTube, uh, and also have the, the Facebook page as well. I'm just very, very grateful uh, for everything that I've been able to achieve by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that if you're grateful, I'll give you more. And I can't speak for anybody else, but Allah, I'm a living proof of that. There has been times in my life where I have been homeless uh, twice uh, to go from you know, being homeless and to traveling to Kuwait to learn Arabic, to graduating the University of Medina, to be accepted inside of a master's program, 
to, you know, starting my own institute, you know, I could only imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give me next if I stay humble and, you know, show my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that al-deena nasiha, that the religion is to say advice. So my advice to anyone who wants to study here is basically two things. The first advice is when you want to quit, remember why you started. The second advice is to always be sincere, to always be sincere. How you deal with people, how you approach your studies, how you approach life, and inshallah, that will grant you success in the dunya and in the hereafter. And that's basically my advice to you guys. So alhamdulillah, um, I would like for you guys to inshallah take a look at the website. Um, I'm open to criti I'm open to criticism. Um, also, follow me on uh, Facebook underneath the name Abdul Wahab Falk. Also, I have the YouTube videos, my YouTube, subscribe to my channel, Pin and Pad Academy. Inshallah Ta'ala, we have a lot of fresh ideas we're going to do where other students are going to be involved in giving classes, myself as well. On the website, we offer Islamic inheritance courses, we offer Arabic courses, uh, translation services. So alhamdulillah, we're starting off very small, but inshallah ta'ala, by the mercy of Allah, we tend to expand. Inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.